How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. Welcome to another study session. In this one, we are going to be looking at how to draw the bones of the foot, looking at the foot structure and applying what we learned in the previous study session where we looked at the anatomical details of the foot. Now here on screen, I'm drawing the foot on a top down view and below this, I'm going to draw the foot on a side view. And these are both drawn in detail, which you've seen before if you have watched the previous video. All of these individual bones that make up the foot are what we are going to be simplifying down to more manageable forms so that we can then draw this on multiple angles from imagination, something that I'll be doing later on. Before we get to that though, we best start by looking at how to break down the, the complex structure of the foot and like I did when covering the hands, I'm going to start with the proportions. Upon doing my research, looking through many anatomy books and browsing videos online, I found that Proko once again had the most effective approach to simplifying the bones of the foot. In his video, How to Draw the Feet with Structure, he explains how the foot can be divided into three equal boxes. Now what I'll do here is draw these boxes, which will obviously be squares here, over the top down and side view of the foot that I've drawn. And by doing this, you can see how these encapsulate the bones of the foot, dividing it into three sections. This will act as a proportional guide. The calcaneus and tarsal sit within the box at the back. Now, I'm also going to refer to some of the methods that I had come across in Stonehouse's anatomy book when looking at how he draws the foot. He also divides it up into thirds at this stage, and if you take a 45 degree line up from the front of that back third, you'll get a line that roughly measures the boundary of the cuboid bone. From here, the metatarsals will sit within this middle box, and what's more obvious on this top-down view is the arc which runs through the head and base of each metatarsal and phalanx. This is similar to when we had looked at the hand. And these curves are important to consider, as it's not as simple as just drawing each metatarsal up to the same point. They are, however, similar in length, excluding the one for the big toe that's a little shorter. Now on this side view, you'll notice that we see most of the metatarsals arching upwards and this is because of that transverse arc. From this point, there are the phalanges at the end divided into three phalanxes. So that's a, a rough idea of the proportions. What I'm going to do now is draw the simplified version of the foot on the same view below these. Here I start by drawing a line to represent the length of the foot and I divide this up into thirds, drawing out three equally sized boxes. And we can do this for both views, seeing as the width of the foot is around the same size as the height of the foot. That's why we'll be dealing with three equally sized boxes later on when it comes to drawing this in perspective. Let's start by simplifying the calcaneus and the tarsal at the back of the foot. And again, these are forms and methods explained by Proko in his video. The talus bone or heel bone is reduced down to a block with an arc cut out. I'm going to draw this on different angles later in the video. The calcaneus is a cylinder that sits on top of this, forming a joint as it connects to the leg bones. Generally, the tarsal bones are grouped together as one into a form which follows the arc of the form for the tarsal bone up to around the halfway point. The end of this is curved as well, which connects to the metatarsal bones that are also grouped into one form, and this form starts to come back down and gets flatter towards the toes. Again, the front plane of this form is curved forwards and up, similar to the shape we had drawn in to block out the metacarpals of the hand. The head of the metatarsals are represented as a cylinder, which wraps around the front. Finally, there are the phalanges, which Proko seems to, again, group together, excluding the big toe. For this form, the separating lines between the phalanxes is still drawn, and you end up with a, a form that looks similar to those shoes that ninjas wear. Anyways, that's the simplified bones of the foot, and I'm going to practice drawing this in perspective. Also, in case any of you watching are new to this series, which would be odd because we are quite far into it now, but know that these study sessions are a way for me to learn and document that process as I go. That's why I often rely on other methods for drawing invented by other artists. 
So now on this next page I'm going to draw the simplified bones of the foot in perspective and start to look at each of these forms which make it up. Whilst here these bones are simplified down to simple shapes, I still found this quite tricky to draw, especially with the inclusion of curves and ellipses, so because of this I started to condense this down to more geometric shapes that I find easier to draw in perspective, and, and I tried to see if I could develop a more practical step-by-step -step approach. You can see how this was drawn within the three equally sized boxes and how each box divides up the bones of the foot. Again, this still involves a lot of curves, so now let's take a look at how to simplify this simplified version. For example, below here, and what we'll probably end up using when we eventually start to draw the mannequin for the figure, is the foot in its simplest form. I've blocked this out with a, a flat box for the base and a tapered block on top, along with placing a ball on top to indicate that joint between the foot and the leg bones. This is something that I know a lot of you watching can probably draw on different angles in perspective without too many complications. So here I start to draw more of these out and then I move on to the next step that involves developing this blocky form. So one thing that's fairly obvious when you look at the shape of the foot, as well as the shape of the simplified version here at the top, is that it starts to taper inwards towards the heel. And so that's what I do next, is I bring these angled lines inwards at either side. Taking them back to the end of this box and down to the base, I then connect them up to the front here. Now that I've brought this inwards, I'm going to also angle down the end of this box for the heel, along with drawing in a cylinder on top. Again, as I do this, I'm still considering the proportions that we looked at earlier. At this stage, I'm also going to add some angled planes within this front section to represent the shape of the phalanges better. Already this is looking more like the bones of the foot, but there's still something important to add here, and that is the lateral and medial arcs at either side. For this, I'll come inwards from the very back around here and curve a line to the front where the tapered section ends. Remember the medial arc is higher and on the same side as the big toe. Now, I made a small mistake here in terms of how I am presenting this to you because I should have progressed a few examples at the same time, step by step, but instead I had drawn each of them fully, one at a time but hopefully you can still see how I do this by looking at these other examples. I follow the same steps, making sure to draw through the boxes so that I can construct these angled planes within them. I'll do this from a, a number of different angles as well. I actually found this to be very straightforward and if you have some experience drawing boxes in perspective, it shouldn't be too complicated. So now at this point I've got something that looks more like the final simplified version I had drawn at the start and it wasn't too hard to get here. And although this is more boxy and geometric, it's a lot easier to draw and position in perspective. And now once I have something like this, I can use it as a basis to then start adding more curved forms and draw out what we had looked at at the start of the video. You can see how I do this on the next page here. I'll start by drawing out what we've just looked at, posing the foot on an angle in perspective. Also notice how I make the outlines of the developed form bolder so that they stand out from the construction lines. Now, next to this, I start to draw out the foot in the same pose, but here I'll take this one step further and draw out the simplified version I had looked at at the start. And this involves more curved forms that are more representative of the foot's actual shape. So at this point, I'm drawing out what I covered previously, tapering in this box for the foot and adding in those inclined planes. It's probably easier to see what's going on here with this being drawn a lot bigger. Here I also include that curved cylinder between the metatarsals and the phalanges, making sure to draw these curved forms over their existing construction lines. 
Below this, I'll also do the same, except here I'm going to pose the foot differently, and here I draw the foot as if it was stood up on its toes, and even in different poses, this method for constructing the foot still applies. The cylinder is placed between the metatarsals and the phalanges because it acts as a hinge. That's why you can see here how I have the phalanges flat on the ground whilst the rest of the foot is angled upwards. Again, I'm just drawing out what I did in the last example. You can still see here how I divide this into three sections, making sure the proportions are correct. Now, we'll likely be drawing this out a lot more in other positions as we progress through future study sessions, but this is a, a manageable step-by-step -step method of creating a, a simplified construction that is good to know when it comes to drawing the bones of the foot. With that being said, I'm going to wrap this one up here, and we've covered the entire skeleton now, so it, it won't be long before we start looking at the muscles. So I look forward to getting to that, I hope you found this one useful, if you did then please leave a like, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real time drawing footage and more, plus you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.